Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, coming to City Hall for an important announcement. Uh, as you know, I uh, had our press folks uh, release the fact that we're coming forward today with a plan, and I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, I want to thank my board members that are here. Uh, there's a couple on vacation. I've talked with them, and I know their support is unanimous in terms of uh, our abilities to help um, make our streets safer and our communities better. So let me start off by saying that as a mayor, I have the unique opportunity to engage citizens in a very close and personal level. Uh, I see you in the grocery stores. I, I see you in our neighborhood restaurants. I see you in our parks and on our sidewalks. Uh, I see the smiles on the faces of our children, like when they caught their first fish at the MacArthur Park Fishing Derby last week. And I also see and cry with the, when I see the tears uh, uh, streaming down the face of a mother who has lost her child to violence. Many cities around the country are experiencing a surge in violence that's being driven largely by the epidemic of illegal drugs and an easy way to make money on the streets, especially when poverty is prevalent, role models are absent, and where many people see no hope for the future. So what do we do? What does the city do? What does a community do? What do you do? To solve these problems, we have to not only understand them, we have to realize that they are complex issues that are rooted in years and years of oftentimes failing systems. We have to realize that there's no quick fix. We have to realize that we are in this together that we can tackle these problems, we can improve the lives of our people, and that we can make our city a better place. As public servants, I and the Board of Directors and our 2,300 plus employees have listened and received your feedback. This is not something that just happened overnight because of the shooting at the Ultra Lounge. Listening is something that we do every day as public servants, is something that you have given to us as a privilege of representing you. I have read the political pundits and the columnists who suggest that Little Rock is at the tipping point, and I am here to tell you they are wrong. Just look around at the wonderful growth we have had over the last several years. It is significant and it is good. When one tragic incident that is an aberration totally obscures all the good things that are happening in our city, it blinds us to all the other things that are going on. It obscures the hard work the city is doing and our citizens are doing to tackle the problems that we face. This press conference is being held to let our citizens know of all the things that the city is doing as your elected representatives to make our city safe. I want to paint a portrait, a complete portrait, of the existing systems and some new systems that we are, have in place to tackle our challenges. It's called Little Rock for Life, a comprehensive violence reduction strategy and an action plan for investing in the community. There are six foundational pillars to this plan, and each one of them deserves in its own right probably an individual press conference. Uh, I was challenged to try and figure out how to be able to explain to everyone the vast number of things that we are doing. And I felt that this would be the appropriate way, but I can only hope that our media will go back and focus on each one of these important pillars as part of Little Rock for Life. Stop the violence, strengthen the Little Rock Police Department, improve our criminal justice system, invest in prevention, promote jobs, opportunity, and education, and rebuild our neighborhoods. So let's begin. Stop the violence. Obviously, disrupting violence before it starts is our objective. It offers potential victims a way out of violence by aggressively prosecuting the small percentage of young people who, are keep, who keep on shooting. One of the functions of Stop the Violence is found in our violence crime apprehension teams. In February of this year, the city uh, police department launched the violent crime apprehension team uh, called VCAT. And it is a team of 25 uh, elite law enforcement officers who are tasked with the focus of solely apprehending Little Rock's most wanted offenders and targeting violent hotspots in the city. The VCAT team so far have made 421 arrests 
856 felony charges. They've seized 80 weapons and recovered 32 stolen vehicles. And in addition to these successes, they are now working uh, with the Department of Community Correction, uh, focusing on the most high priority parole and probation absconders that are in our streets. I'm now announcing a new program called Ceasefire Little Rock. Based on models in other cities that have seen significant reductions in shootings and killings, the program tar targets areas uh, with up to 45% success. Ceasefire Little Rock seeks to increase public safety and to curb violence. The model uses what we call violence interrupters and outreach workers who have street credibility to interrupt and resolve the potentially violent situations before they escalate. In other words, we're using people who've been in trouble before, felons who are in the streets wanting to help us to keep our streets safe. These people, these interveners who have street credibility, are going to be used uh, independently of the police to try and interrupt disputes before they become violent. And in the same sense, then, to allow us as a community to take these violent individuals and get them assistance and to provide access to wraparound services to let them know there's a better way to move forward in life. It's been very successful in other, in other cities and I believe it'll be successful here. The multi-agency intelligence unit. This was announced last week. It is a multi-intelligence unit uh, led by the Little Rock Police Department of state, federal, and local partners who gather intelligence, especially uh, uh, in the area of uh, hot spots in our city. So the FBI, the Arkansas State Police, the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office, uh, the Arkansas Department of Community Corrections, and the, and the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission are all working together in a unified way uh, led by the Little Rock Police Department to gather intelligence and accelerate the processing of investigations that go beyond just the crime at hand and to look at larger organizations in play. We are also a member of the National Public Safety Partnership. Back in the fall of 2015, Little Rock joined with the Department of Justice's Violent Crime Reduction Network, uh, which gives us access to technical expertise and resources of the federal government. It also allows us to um, uh, work with uh, a variety of partners, the Department of Justice, the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, the FBI, the ATF, and a variety of those organizations. The National Public Safety Partnership is led by our local uh, attorney and the U.S. Attorney, uh, and they work closely in terms of sharing information. In February of this year, uh, 41 indictments on some of the most violent offenders in Pulaski County were announced as a direct result of this collective work of the Violence Reduction Network. We are also requesting additional assistance from the Department of Justice. We have three grants that are pending. Let me briefly mention those to you. Project Safe Neighborhoods is a $200,000 grant proposal that pairs up the city of Little Rock with, with, with uh, West Memphis uh, that is uh, focused on coordinating responses to violence, evaluating data, and direct enforcement on hotspots in our city. Another grant that we've requested is called uh, for a gun crimes intelligence unit. And uh, this is um, based on the Office of Justice Programs, their technology unit uh, for innovation and public safety. And with this funding, uh, we intend to form a gun crimes intelligence unit that will allow us to purchase link analysis and database software to allow us to do better uh, analysis on gun crimes, connecting up, shot, connecting up shells to crimes uh, and, and, and other crimes that have occurred in the, in the city. Um, it is. Um, also going to allow us, I, we believe, to be able to purchase what we call gunshot detection uh, uh, technology, which allows us to respond more quickly to areas of the city where we hear gunshots. Uh, the Burn Innovation Grant is another grant we're after. It's a million dollar grant uh, for research and to develop a, a strategic plan to implement uh, community-based programs, micro-targeting identified hotspots in the community and providing service and intervention programs to the community and the people in those hotspot areas. I'm also announcing the formation of what we call the Group Violence Reduction Strategy. And this targets geographic areas of high crime and the groups that commit violent acts. The strategy is based on the belief that violent crime can be prevented when the costs of committing the crime are perceived by the offender to outweigh the benefits. It targets known chronic adult, violent, and juvenile offenders 
It's led by the mayor's office, uh, and the Little Rock GVRS will include three major components. We will collaborate with respected members of the affected communities, in other words, in the community itself, along with criminal justice professionals, judges, prosecutors, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the ATF, to deliver a single message to violent individuals, and that is stop the shooting. It will also organize and build capacity of the social service providers, clergy and probation and parole officers so that we can give these people the support and services that they need to no longer engage in violent acts. And finally, it will focus enforcement specifically to deter these violent acts and to ensure that there are consequences for those that continue to commit violence. The typical impact of a group violence reduction strategy team in other cities has seen a 35 to 60 percent reduction in community-wide homicides. It's important in the next element that we stop, the, stop domestic violence. Uh, it doesn't get the attention sometimes that we've seen in some of these drive-by situations that we've talked about. Between 2009 and 2016, 17 percent of Little Rock's homicides were uh, a result of domestic violence. Um, what we do currently is we have uh, a, violence, um, a domestic violence team in our police department, and it centers on providing uh, uh, high-level victim support on any domestic violence call in the city, whether there's an arrest or not. Uh, the victims are given a domestic violence lethality assessment form. Uh, it's forwarded on to our Little Rock Victim Services Unit and our Violent Crime Squad. And that unit follows up then with each victim to assist them uh, with medical bills, a safe place to stay, finding new jobs, and any other services that are needed to protect them from another attack. As part of this effort, we can do more in this area, however. Uh, and with the assistance of the prosecuting attorney, uh, we believe we can do some evidence-based domestic violence prosecutions that are based on circumstantial evidence in certain situations, rather than having the witness have to testify. And to pursue these domestic violence prosecutions using uh, neighborhood reports, medical information, emergency services, uh, defendant statements, uh, whereby we can relieve the victim of the burden of having to testify. There is a way that we can intercede and do better in the area of domestic violence. Let me move on to the next uh, element, which is to strengthen the Little Rock Police Department. We need and are embarking on an aggressive recruiting uh, strategy citywide and regionally. We understand that uh, violence and crime will, will not and cannot be stopped by putting a police officer on every street corner, but the current vacancies in the police department are hampering our efforts to deploy more community policing strategies. Little Rock is not alone in this challenge. Uh, urban areas throughout the country are facing similar situations. The current environment is increasingly hard to find citizens willing to be police officers. To address this shortage, however, the police department uh, engaged last year the International Association of Chiefs of Police, uh, human resource organizations, and our own res uh, human resources staff to transform the city's uh, process of recruiting and hiring new officers, trying to streamline the process and make it more effective, thereby making more people eligible to be police officers. And the police department is aggressively recruiting currently in person and is, ready to, and is getting ready to launch a state-of-the-art website uh, and social media effort. They focused on one-in-one -on -one recruitment. Uh, the police recruitment unit has uh, had a presence in multiple college and university career fairs, as well as the Little Rock Air Force Base. They've been in 13 different other career fairs throughout the city of Little Rock and events around the region. I want to say, though, that we can do more in this area as well. So in addition to this, I have directed the city manager to immediately engage an advertising and public relations firm to deploy a statewide and regional recruitment marketing plan, including television, radio, newspaper, aimed at recruiting currently certified officers from around the state and region. These officers have a shorter span for engagement and being on the beat, and we need to be very aggressive in our surrounding regions and states to aggressively recruit people to become some of Little Rock's finest in the Little Rock Police Department. We have one of only 100 certified law enforcement agencies in the country. Uh, the men and women of our police department work very, very hard. They're very professional. And we're going to go out and find others just like that and try to recruit them here. Progress is being seen. 
On August 4th, we have 18 officers that will be graduating, um, and we have two classes scheduled between now and the end of the year. Starting August 21st and November 21st, uh, we have two additional classes, and Chief Buckner has committed uh, uh, to me and now to the board and to the public that at least 60 recruits will be hired as officers from these two classes. So the challenge is out there. Recruitment and retention incentives are also needed. We recognize we have many officers with many, many years of, of service that have the opportunity to retire. We need to keep these officers. We need their experience on the streets. So currently we're offering a $5,000 signing bonus for new recruits upon graduation from the academy. We're also offering an additional $5,000 uh, of incentives for those who live in the city. Also, these officers that are already certified are also eligible for the $10,000 incentive package. We recognize that we must reduce the number of retirements, and we're working with the city manager to develop retention incentives to retain officers that are eligible for retirement. We are forming a what we call the Gray Squad and the Telephone Cadet Squad. We know that sworn police officers in the department are our most valuable resource, and we need them out on the streets. Uh, doing administrative work, answering telephone calls for minor accidents, and a lot of those things are certainly uh, uh, essential for the overall functioning of uh, government and the department, but we believe that it can be done in a better way. Uh, they're best on the street trying to solve our cases. So the city is going to be immediately implementing a civilian squad that's equipped to handle low-level traffic offenses and administrative work, thereby freeing up our police officers to respond to calls for service. The police department is going to be target, targeting young adults uh, in the city with an interest in police work, hopefully creating a pipeline of good local police officer recruits for our future academy classes. We also, as another principle, are going to be encouraging greater citizen cooperation. The police and the prosecutors cannot solve crimes and convict criminals on their own. Uh, those in the community with information must come forward and those in the criminal justice community must also be provided an environment where those witnesses feel safe and comfortable in doing so with the information they provide us. Certainly our Crime Stoppers hip line, uh, tip line is, is anonymous. Uh, but we need, to do more, we need to do more to enhance uh, citizen cooperation. So we will be coupling uh, uh, our continued push for more citizen participation in these violent crime investigations by offering a standard $10,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of suspects in any open homicide investigation in our city. Uh, we're going to strive to protect these witnesses that come forward by providing increased services to anyone who provides us information. Um, um, and we'll do that with coordinating with the prosecutor's office to provide assistance uh, with their caseworkers, including the necessity of relocation to other neighborhoods uh, if they feel threatened. More community policing. The key to a safe city is creating that trust bond between our uh, men and women in blue and our citizens in our neighborhoods. And we are committed. To we are committed to continuing and expanding our community uh, policing efforts. Uh, we've received funding in the past for uh, community policing, uh, and unfortunately, because of our shortage of police officers, we're not able to do it as uh, comprehensively as we would like. But uh, we intend to, with growing our police ranks, uh, com uh, we intend to continue to expand that effort, and we're committed to building trust in the community and we'll explore additional ways that we can continue with that vital work. Improving our criminal justice system. There are things we can do in the system itself that are so very important. Uh, I convened a Capital City uh, Prevention Task Force to investigate ways to reduce crime through adjustments to the current system. Uh, the task force was comprised of people who can change policies and actually make a difference. They included members of city and state government agencies, law enforcement officers, correction officials, judges, uh, society reentry organizations, and defense attorneys. And they were tasked with the, they were tasked with the, the, the challenge of reviewing policies and laws uh, and investigating best practices that could be used to improve public safety, uh, deter crime, and of course, uh, make sure that our, our city and neighborhoods are safer. Uh, some of those specific recommendations include the following. We need to establish a domestic violence court. These courts are consistently uh, more able to apply 
uh, domestic violence law and seek to deter repeat offenders by significantly increasing sanctions, giving domestic abusers also access to treatment and other counseling, and providing other services to the perpetrators and the victims. As I mentioned, 17 percent of our homicides are domestic violence related, and we believe that working with the domestic violence court could greatly reduce the amount of, of people who die in these situations. Electronic monitoring for parolees, very important. Little Rock and Pulaski County receive an inordinate percentage of parole prisoners uh, from the state of Arkansas. The average caseload for a parole officer here uh, is double that in other counties. And in order to effectively monitor all these parolees, uh, the task force is recommending electronic monitoring systems be used much, uh, much more greatly. Uh, electronic monitoring obviously uses 21st century technology, GPS units that are worn usually as an ankle monitor uh, that detect movements of these people on, on parole or probation who show that there's a propensity for reoffending through the risk assessments that are used. Uh, it allows, uh, allows us to know where they are and whether or not they're uh, within uh, the area of a particular crime that's being committed. The recent reductions in the cost of these systems make it much more affordable and it's much less expensive than hiring additional parole officers. And so we are going to be urging the state government, our governor, and our legislators uh, to provide adequate funding for effective implementation of GPS monitoring. The next item that is very important is uh, we are going to now requiring and uh, uh, we are now going to require uh, video surveillance. Uh, let me tell you what I mean by that. Video surveillance helps to deter crime and aid law enforcement by, capture, by capturing evidence of investigations. As part of the permitting process, I'm going to be introducing an ordinance that requires video surveillance cameras in certain businesses such as convenience stores, liquor stores, private clubs, special event centers and the like. Uh, establishments that are open late in the evening. I am tired and I know our police department is tired of having to ask people for their cell phones to look at video uh, or to try and ask others if there's video of a particular incident that happened. It's going to help solve crimes and it's certainly going to make it uh, much easier for us to apprehend the people who have committed these violent acts. Aggressive fun, uh, excuse me. We need aggressive federal gun crimes prosecutions. Federal firearm charges carry a much greater penalty than state firearm charges, particularly a felon in possession of a firearm. Uh, and our prosecuting attorney, Larry Jegley, and the, uh, prosec the U.S. Attorney-elect Cody Highland, who is a former prosecutor over in Faulkner County, well understand the importance of these cases being adopted by the U.S. Attorney's Office. And they have pledged aggressive adoption of these cases so that felons carrying guns are going to be taken off the streets. We also need to ensure high bail in crime prosecutions, particularly violent crime prosecutions. According to the Pulaski County Jail officials, there's no set bail, um, uh, no, no set bail schedule uh, for people accused with crimes. It's pretty much independently up to our courts to determine what kind of bail to set. I've visited with the prosecutor about trying to ensure that on these violent crimes that we receive uh, high bail to try and keep these people off the streets. We also need tougher witness intimidation and bribery statutes. Criminal cases hinge on witnesses coming forward, as I mentioned and testifying. Unfortunately, the witnesses are often intimidated, threatened, and sometimes harmed for cooperating with law enforcement. When I was the prosecutor in the 90s, when we had a, a gang problem of uh, large magnitude, one of the biggest challenges I had was keeping witnesses alive between the time that the incident occurred and the trial occurred. We have got to do more as it relates to trying to protect these witnesses. We've got to have tougher witness intimidation statutes. Uh, I've listed and set out in the handout that you have uh, three or four of these statutes that need to be enhanced and we're going to be going to the state legislature and asking that these witness uh, bribery and intimidation statutes be, uh, be enhanced substantially. The other major pillars that are very important, I've talked about the law enforcement pillars now, but I want to talk about the other pillars that are so very important, which has to do with obviously invest in prevention promoting jobs and opportunity and education and rebuilding our neighborhoods. We cannot, and we know, we cannot arrest our way out of this problem. Little Rock for Life puts a heavy emphasis on helping our young people and our families succeed. 
We have numerous city prevention and intervention programs. And these are neighborhood-based programs that give at-risk youth a safe environment after school and during the summer. Uh, they're located in various geographic areas of the city. Uh, they're run in partnership with a variety of programs. Um, and we have programs that reach 1,400 children every year. The neighborhood-based programs are run by our Department of Community Programs, and we work with a variety of organizations such as the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Whetstone Boys Club, Boys and Girls Club, the Thrasher Boys and Girls Club. We work with a variety of other organizations such as Our House, uh, dealing with uh, youth uh, uh, and, and providing high-quality mentoring and enrichment programs. It's part of a broad crime reduction strategy, uh, and the city is going to continue to try and ensure that vulnerable youth uh, are given a nurturing environment uh, where they can learn about the important skills of respect for each other and respect for the community. We are working currently in 16 different neighborhoods uh, with these neighborhood-based organizations that reach out to more than 500 young people. And as I said, they're located in, and concentrated in some of the more disadvantaged areas of our city. Our Little Rock Parks and Recreation Program. Our Parks and Recreation Program this summer has provided a safe haven for 1,286 young people between the ages of 6 and 15. They can arrive at 7 o'clock in the morning and stay until 6 o'clock at night for eight weeks. And the total sum to a family, the total sum for that entire eight weeks is $90. $90. It's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity to help our, our, our parents and our families who are struggling to try and make ends meet when they don't have school during the summer for their children to be educated. And we provide that kind of opportunity. Uh, their recreational programs, their educational programs. It's a tremendous, tremendous program that the city's been doing now for many, many years. We have a summer enrichment program. The Department of Community Programs provides support for 19 different summer enrichment programs. And we partner with uh, a variety of organizations as well. And we reach over 570 children with this particular program who would otherwise be home alone uh, as a latchkey child. Instead, they're going to be having activities during the summer through our summer enrichment program. Our Little Rock School District, I saw Superintendent Mike Poor here. Uh, we work in partnership with the school district uh, on summer programs in 22 schools. These programs range from summer recreation to enrichment programs to summer school. And through this partnership, we can also ensure that students enjoy a safe and fruitful summer uh, within a nurturing environment uh, instead of spending their free time on the streets. We have a, the city's Little Rock Athletic Program. We offer a variety of athletic programs at our community centers for use ages 3 through 17. It encompasses 10 different sports. Uh, and we literally engage thousands of children, teaching them the importance of teamwork, cooperation, discipline. And these low-cost programs are especially important to our underserved youth who may not have as many opportunities as others. Obviously, mentoring, a next very important component of investing in prevention, mentoring. We know that children need positive role models to be in their lives. So be it a parent, be it a pastor, be it a concerned neighbor, every successful citizen sitting here today has someone at some point that was your mentor. Unfortunately, some of our city's youth lack these positive role models. And so we have developed several programs to address this gap in order for our children to develop the character and the discipline and the skills to succeed. Let me mention some of these programs. Our OK program, our, 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 our Kids program, is a program run by our Little Rock Police Department. Sergeant Willie Davis is in charge of it right over here. Uh, and it is a program that is focused on mentoring young African American males. Uh, Sergeant Davis and his team of police officers and adult role models meet on a weekly basis uh, uh, with these students. And they mentor them. They give them guidance. Uh, especially these at-risk youth. We have 193 students in our OK program uh, that are getting regular mentoring by African-American role models. And I want to thank those people who are dedicated to it. We need more. We have a similar program for young girls. It's called GEMS, or Girls Empowered by Mentoring Sisterhood. And it does a similar program of providing guidance and mentoring. Uh, we currently have 30 girls enrolled, and we would like more. 
So I'm offering to the community an opportunity to volunteer young girls, young women who want to be a part of GEMS. We have a police live-in camp. Many of you didn't know this, but our police force has been hosting a week-long live-in camp where police and students are bonded together through outdoor activities and recreation. This year marked the 20th, the 20th anniversary of the program. We had 115 students that were enrolled and participated in this. The Mayor's Youth Council. Uh, every year as school begins, uh, we have a Mayor's Youth Council that brings together a diverse group of people, uh, high school students from the 10th grade through the 12th grade uh, that are there to uh, earn uh, uh, the opportunity to volunteer for a variety of community organizations and activities that are going on during the year. And most importantly, they get a little bit of an education about leadership and about the city and understanding the importance of the city. It's a tremendous program. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to do that and to provide future leaders for the city that are sometime going to be a city director, they're going to be a mayor, they're going to be a, a governor. Uh, uh, it's a tremendous opportunity to see that go on. And it, there's, no, there's no requirement. There's no educational requirement. There's no requirement whatsoever just to show up and be a part of that great group of people. We have mentors in our schools. Again, very important. Mentoring in our schools is a critical component of Little Rock for Life. We have City Year. City Year is uh, funded, for, it's been funded for 13 years. It has AmeriCorps volunteers in five schools throughout the city, providing valuable mentoring and tutoring. We have school resource officers. We currently have 20 of our school resource police officers that are in our schools during the school year. They provide an opportunity to engage in conversation and networking with students. They give them an opportunity to find out that police officers are just human beings like anybody else, uh, that can smile, that can give some hot help, some guidance, maybe give a hug or two. Uh, it's very important that these school resource officers continue to interact in our schools. Uh, it's very, very important. It's a good mentoring program. The City of Little Rock, since 2013, has provided employee volunteer and mentoring. We give up to 52 hours annually of paid time off to our own city employees to go out and volunteer. We think that's great. In fact, one of our employees won the Volunteer of the Year Award uh, from the schools this past year. Uh, Susan Langley, I believe it is. And uh, we're very happy for her about that. And the point is, is that we want to encourage other businesses in our community uh, to allow their employees to receive paid time off to mentor our city's youth. And of course, we have a variety of community mentors and volunteers. Organizations such as Let Our Violence End, the Boys and Girls Club, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Uh, there are numerous other organizations that are providing mentors for our youth. Multiple efforts are now underway to bring these together to increase the number of mentors that we have that are available. There's more, of course, still in this area that we can do. Uh, one, of the, one, of the, uh, one of the programs that we are initiating is the Gun Safety Coalition. Many of our citizens have organized and spoken up against gun violence and unsafe guns in the home. Uh, we, have or, we are going to be organizing and forming a gun safety coalition to help decrease accidental shooting. The coalition will educate the public about gun safety. Currently, a Mother's Demand Action, who are here today, are distributing 800 trigger locks that I received uh, from the Bass Pro Shop. Uh, other organizations, such as our Little Rock Police Foundation, will also be developing additional gun safety programs and materials. We've developed a youth master plan. In February of 2015 uh, through 2016, we developed a youth master plan, which is a visionary guide to improve the health and welfare of our young people. And the master plan committee sought the input from stakeholders throughout the city and the region and around the country. Uh, uh, and our Department of Community Programs has developed a comprehensive plan uh, to better serve our young people with this new master plan. Public awareness campaigns are important. Little Rock needs an active and informed citizenry, and to deal with that and this pernicious problem of violence, uh, we, need, we need public awareness. The city is engaging and in supporting a variety of public awareness campaigns, uh, such as the Victory Over Violence campaign that KRK and Fox 16 is, are currently initiating. We need more people and more organizations to bring that public awareness to bear. 
uh, and I want to thank them for that. It's important that we inform our citizens in the community about the efforts to fight crime and the ways in which citizens can become involved. And it doesn't just need to be one demographic area of our city or demographic portion of our people. Our future depends on all of us pulling together and holding hands and making this happen. Let's move on to the issue of jobs. I want to talk to you about jobs for a minute because it's very important. People need the tools to succeed. They need to recognize their own worth. To change direction away from crime, they need to have something that is too important to lose, and that is a job. We have our summer youth employment program. This summer we've employed 650 youth. We're paying their salaries, and they have been located in a variety of organizations and business businesses and nonprofits throughout the city. It gives them an opportunity to learn the technical and soft skills that are so necessary to be a good employee. For many of them, it's a first job. And we need to reach out this next year to the business community to expand this already successful program to serve even more of our city's youth. The challenge that we had is we had money for 650 jobs and we had 1,200 people that applied. So that's the challenge that we are laying out. Let me talk about reentry programs. We continue to hear about people with felony records not being able to get a job. And returning from, fr from prison we know is a daunting task. Formerly incarcerated individuals face a number of barriers to reentering society. They include uh, criminal background checks, strained family relationships, trouble finding housing, just to name a few. And because these, of the, these barriers uh, and there's an increased uh, propensity or a potential for them to reoffend. The state of Arkansas equips former inmates with $100 and a bus ticket when they get released from the penitentiary. I'm sad to say that that was the amount that they got when I graduated from high school way, way, way too many years ago. But we can do more. Everybody can do more. Uh, since there's an inordinate number of parolees that are released here in Pulaski County, it's important for the city of Little Rock to reach out to these individuals with programs to assist with their reentry into society. We have several specific programs helping felons who on parole who, are, who have been released back into the community. First of all, we have the city's reentry program. This didn't just start yesterday, it started in 2013. We began with a sidewalk program where we teach them those construction skills. Uh, we take former inmates to rehabilitate our city's sidewalks. We've seen significant success with this project and it's been expanded to Public Works, to our Department of Public Works, Fleet Services, the Little Rock Zoo, Parks and Recreation, our housing and neighborhood programs, and even our Little Rock Police Department. These former inmates are hired to do projects and they receive, uh, they receive a salary. Uh, and it's a, a very, very good, important project that we think demonstrates as an example to other businesses what can happen. The city is leading the way on that. The Goodwill Reentry Program. Through our Office of Reentry Services here in the city and our Workforce Development Board, the city refers former inmates to Goodwill's Reentry Program. These programs offer resume assistance, job readiness skills, job search assistance, job placement, personal development and soft skills training. We have also at our house a reentry program and we contract with them to provide reentry services to uh, people who are going to be returning to society and they actually work with the inmates before they are released and follow up with them with job and training placement opportunities. And then finally we have through our workforce development board a new program called the Rock City Reentry. I'm very proud of our Workforce Development Board. They've received a, a, a over million dollar grant to provide intensive workforce reentry services for former inmates. 150 uh, former inmates are going to receive intensive job training uh, skills and support. They're going to be receiving living expense, career counseling, and job placement services. Uh, my Workforce Development Board uh, will be providing a, a press release or a a news conference about more details on this in, in the near future, probably next week. Well, people need a skill, and so we know that it's important that we have career skills training. Career skills are an essential part of any job, and Little Rock recognizes this need and is working to provide these opportunities for career building uh, skills. Let me mention a, a story. Yesterday I was at the uh, I was at uh, Jericho Way, our, our homeless day resource center. 
uh, and I walked by a gentleman who said, hey, Mark. And uh, I looked over, and, and he was sitting there uh, as a volunteer at the Day Resource Center. And he, uh, he said, well, I think you put me in the penitentiary. Uh, I'm out. And I was, I'm, I'm, my nickname is OG for Original Gangster. And I started talking with him. And he's volunteering at the Homeless Day Resource Center. And I said, are you out in the streets? Are you talking to these kids? And he said, yeah, yeah, man, I really am. I'm talking to these kids, and uh, they don't have any hope. And I keep talking to them, and what they keep telling me is that they want a job. They want a job. So we've got a challenge. We've got a challenge to try and make sure they got the skills and the training to not only get the job, but to keep a job. So what are we doing about career skills training? Well, our house, we contract with our house for uh, specific skills training. And through their programs, they can obtain a GED. They can uh, obtain college readiness classes, wage certificates. They've got a small business academy. They teach culinary classes. We have a youth build program through our workforce development board, and they do similar things uh, for young people who are disconnected from the labor force. They provide intensive wraparound services for youth that are disconnected, where they can get a GED, they can get a professional certificate in a variety of industries, such as trucking, certified nursing assistants, the industrial arts. We have the Goodwill Adult High School that's gonna be starting up in the fall. And uh, we are very supportive of Goodwill Arkansas and their first adult high school that is being a, there to address those disconnected people as adults who've fallen out of the system and never got a, never got a high school diploma. And they're going to be starting with over 180 students with flexible hours and also doing skills training as well. Our Metropolitan Votech, uh, part, uh, part of our Little Rock School District. Uh, the Little Rock School District offers a variety of vocational and technical training at Metropolitan Votech, and they uh, offer certification in a wide range of areas as well, such as automotive skills, welding, cosmetology, criminal justice. In fact, we have both our Little Rock Police Department and Fire Department that go there and train people that are in Metropolitan Votech. There's about, a, I believe, 180 or so students there. Uh, about. Uh, what it takes to become a police officer or a firefighter. And finally, of course, we have Pulaski Tech. And through a variety of those programs that they have there, they can receive certificates and associate degrees uh, uh, that will take them on to find a good skill and a professional opportunity to be successful. You may not know it, but we've been doing entrepreneurship training now for 15 years. We've trained over uh, our our, our uh, small business development center has trained entrepreneurs uh, in a variety of different uh, types of jobs and opportunities. Uh, we've had 32 different 12-week classes, um, uh, and we continue to provide a very affordable way for people who want to develop their own business to be able to learn how to do that and to turn these dreams into reality. Uh, many of the graduates have gone on to great success in business, Arkansas Flag and Banner, J. Kelly Referrals, the Little Rock Priming Center, a variety of businesses that have come through our small business development entrepreneurship training program that, again, we've had now for more than 15 years. And finally, we know that we got to give people a job somehow, so we've got a vacant lot maintenance program. Uh, we use our local neighborhood organizations currently to go out here and mow the many lots and vacant weed lots that the city winds up inheriting or acquiring because of uh, tax liens and things of that nature. And we're going to be encouraging those neighborhood organizations to take young people from the neighborhood and let them mow the grass, let them clean up the lots so that they have a way to earn some money this summer. And finally, let me talk about another important area, another important principle, and that is rebuilding our neighborhoods. We need to fight the blight. Blight threatens public safety, it lowers property values, it holds back neighborhoods, and it degrades quality of life. If we can eliminate blight, we can begin to revitalize neighborhoods. So we have some programs in place for that. First of all, I'm very pleased to announce uh, that uh, for now, for the last two years, we've been working on uh, going after an AmeriCorps grant, a major, major grant called a Neighborhood Safety Corps. It's modeled after a program in Detroit. We went to Detroit, studied it, went after the grant, and I'm here to tell you that just a couple of weeks ago, we were, we were told that we were receiving the grant. It'll start in September. 
and it it's a, follows a highly successful model there, um, and it utilizes, and we will be utilizing 10 full-time and 20 part-time AmeriCorps members who will conduct safety assessments, home improvements, energy improvements, upgrades, and they'll help to revitalize uh, homes in seven targeted challenged areas of our city. We'll leverage additional volunteers and neighborhood-wide cleanup and house painting, and obviously seeks to combat crime by cleaning up areas where potential um, uh, crime can occur and raise community aware awareness about deterring crime. A similar program we've used uh, uh, in the summer is called World Changers. Many of you might be familiar with that program. Um, this summer, we had over 160 young people who came to town from all over the country. And in the course of two weeks, they um, fixed up uh, 27 houses uh, for elderly residents on fixed incomes who are unable to keep their property up. 27 homes in two weeks. As one of the, as one of the citizens said, um, uh, this was a program that was truly transformational for their neighborhood. Uh, we're going to continue with World Changers, of course. Uh, we also have worked with and are going to continue to work with the National Community uh, Conservation Corps, the NCCC AmeriCorps team, to do energy conservation. Uh, it's a free energy uh, uh, initiative uh, where we test and weatherize homes for low-income households. We uh, uh, leak, uh, we uh, seal air, air leaks, and uh, we insulate homes to improve energy efficiency. We lower the cost of these owner-occupied houses, and incidentally, we were able to find 40 of the homes that had gas leaks, uh, an unintended benefit that further helps to save uh, save people and 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 clearly improve their life. Um, we have a pilot rehab uh, housing program. Uh, Director Adcock is involved in this. It, re it recognizes that if we can rehabilitate homes that have been in tax foreclosure, it can be a very cost-effective way to increase affordable housing stock. And so we are purchasing some homes in tax foreclosure, renovating them, and selling them to low-income residents. The, uh, the intended benefit has been working, which means that other people in the neighborhood are now beginning to fix up their homes. Uh, they're seeing the city lead the way on this area, and it's a great example of what can happen to transform neighborhoods. Of course, very important, uh, community development block grants, a program that was started in 1974 by Richard Nixon, uh, one that continues to get beat up in the Congress, uh, which is very important to this city. Uh, each year, we receive funds that we leverage to rehabilitate homes for senior citizens. We provide loans to low-income families to repair these homes, and we build new and affordable housing stock. Last year, we helped 155 families improve their homes or become first-time homeowners. We also are expanding our land bank. We acquire and have acquired a variety of, of uh, properties since 2007 when we started the land bank, and we want to get those back into productive use rather than let them sit idle for years. And we're going to expand the land bank by enforcing city liens against vacant and abandoned properties. Hundreds of these properties are encumbered with liens for weed lots, demolition, housing code violations. Uh, we need to aggressively go after those and either get our money that we that we expended on these um, these uh, uh, recalcitrant owners of property, or we need to acquire the property and bring it into our land bank. And finally, let's say that, uh, as many people know, we do demolitions. Um, uh, since 2011, we have uh, eliminated or raised 450 blighted properties, and we're going to continue to expand this program and focus on hotspots in the city uh, uh, that are uh, our challenge neighborhoods. Um, we do this, uh, obviously, with people who repeatedly refuse to maintain their property. Cleaning the streets is important. We're going to be expanding and helping to bolster the morale of our citizens by trying to uh, increase the number of streets in our hotspot areas with our Adopt the Street program and also uh, work with um, uh, uh, our Keep Little Rock Beautiful Committee and hopefully with a variety of our agencies and organizations such as Victory Over Violence to do citywide cleanup uh, and do citywide community walks uh, to try and transform these areas block by block. A very important element that I've been talking about, and that has to do with lighting up the city. A well-lit city is a safe city. There are over 24,000 streetlights in the city of Little Rock. Many of these streetlights are not, are not working and create dark areas in our neighborhoods. 
Entergy is responsible for maintaining and repairing the vast majority of these streetlights. They have a maintenance crew that covers the most heavily trafficked streets in our city. They also respond to other repairs in neighborhoods when they are contacted. <clears throat> However, if no one complains, these lights remain dark and can remain dark for months. So my challenge today is to the citizens of the city to spend the next 90 days looking up to see if the street lights in your neighborhood are on. If they are not on, I am asking you to note the location, either by street location or by number on the poll. Each one of these has a number on the poll and to go online and enter the information into the city's 311 system. We have a responsibility to do this. A safe city is a well-lit city. This is a, not a well-lit city, I can promise you that. I came home not too long ago and from the Cantrell Viaduct to the intersection of Cantrell Road and, um, and Kavanaugh, I counted 17 streetlights out. We can do much better. We can do much better, but I need you as citizens to engage. So when you're watching that 10 o'clock news, when you're watching that 10 o'clock news, I want you to go out there and look out there and see whether, you're, whether your street light's on or not. Obviously, uh, one of our programs that we think is very important is the criminal abatement program, which we have been doing now for many years, where we use multiple departments and resources to target uh, specific buildings and neighborhoods uh, where there's a large amount of crime and nuisance complaints. Uh, we've heard citizens complain. We put them into a program, try to get the issues addre uh, uh, addressed, or we, we go ahead and file litigation and sue them over it. Uh, we learned that in the Ultra Lounge case that there had been uh, sanctions uh, by the ABC on 12 different occasions. Uh, had we been aware of that uh, and had we had greater communication among all the parties, we would have been able, hopefully, maybe to have that in, a, in a, an extra special watch program or a criminal abatement program. Uh, so we are adding, we are adding to, um, to our criminal abatement uh, program uh, the liaisons with the ABC board so that we can know about these establishments that are repeatedly violating either a variety of city or state laws. Uh, and finally, let me mention uh, uh, a program that we have been doing now for many years is called Love Your Block. It's come, it came from the Cities of Service uh, grant that uh, we received many, many years ago that I went after. And it's an opportunity for neighborhood organizations to do a project that improves their neighborhood. Uh, the program is aimed at promoting volunteerism as well and getting to know your neighbor in your, in your neighborhood uh, by making public improvements. Uh, we, are, we will be awarding $28,000 this year to help with those uh, improvement projects. Um, and uh, any organization, a neighborhood organization that's registered with the city can apply. Uh, it's a program that will encourage projects that have lasting benefit to our neighborhoods and promote volunteerism uh, and foster civic pride. Each, each group will receive up to $1,000 toward the eligible offenses. Uh, we've done all sorts of wonderful projects such as community gardens. Uh, we've uh, seen people work on improvements uh, for adopting animals uh, and a, a variety of different programs in, in our neighborhoods. And finally, neighborhood watch programs. <clears throat> we know that we've got to have our citizenry help in terms of solving violent crimes and citizens can play a very, very important role in preventing crimes in their own neighborhoods, uh, particularly through the development and the use of neighborhood watch programs. Uh, there's no question, uh, as we have been going out on these uh, community forums on crime, uh, we point out where the neighborhood watch programs are and where they are not, and the amount of crime that occurs where there's no neighborhood watch program is, is significantly increased. So we would like to see more. We have 58 currently, uh, 58 active neighborhood watch programs, and we are here to help expand that. Our police department it runs this program, will provide additional training and support uh, for these neighborhood programs to set up their own neighborhood watch. So let me say in closing, we must understand that one person alone cannot solve, or for that matter be blamed for, our challenges. A police chief alone can't solve all these problems. A city manager alone can't solve all these problems. A minister alone can't solve all these problems. A city director alone can't solve all these problems. And certainly a mayor alone can't solve all these problems. 
A citizen like you, individually, alone, can't solve all these problems. But by working together, using wise investment, and implementing smart policies, along with some prayer and God's grace, I believe we can succeed. The power is in our community partnership, Little Rock for Life. I know this was fairly long. I want to thank you all for your attention and for being here today. Thank you very much.